Today on Judge Faith, a pack of dogs terrorize a neighborhood. Actually, the big dog did not chase after him first. It was the little ones. You didn't but have a chance, no sir. No, I didn't. <laughs> my dog actually is, is tied up all the time. When it was supposed to be quarantined, it was in my yard. That is a lie. So your dogs are running around like a pack of wolves. And later, the defendant claims he had car insurance, but Judge Faith knows the truth. He just comes out of nowhere and fails to stop. You got the right of way. Yeah, I have the right of way. Okay. Did you have insurance on your car, sir? Yes. Are you sure about that? It might have had a laugh. It might have had or it did. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Rick Hernandez claims the defendant's dog attacked him while he was in his backyard. He is suing for $5,045, the cost of medical expenses, lost wages, and pain and suffering. Defendant Vicky Baraja says the plaintiff overreacted and incurred charges due to his own behavior. She says her dog would never attack another person unless provoked. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Hernandez versus Barajas. Thank you, Barbara. Rick Hernandez. Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Vicki Barajas? Yes. For $5,045, you say her dog bit you, and you have out-of-pocket medical expenses, lost wages, and you're also suing for pain and suffering? That's correct. Okay, we'll start with you, sir. Why don't you tell me what happened? Give me some background. Well, I lived next to uh, Ms. Barajas for about two years. You live next to her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, on um, the day of June 1st, 2014. Um, how long, you say you live next to her for two years? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and how many dogs do you have, ma'am? I have four. And at the time of this incident, how many did you have? Four. Four, okay. Go ahead. I was going to my backyard and uh, about 10 feet from the door to my shed and I heard a loud barking noise um, and I turned around and a German Shepherd was running my direction and it attacked me and it bit me on my right leg behind my knee. Were you injured? Yes, I was. Had you seen these dogs before? Uh, did yes, you know I have. that this dog belonged to the defendant? Yes, I did. I have uh, pictures of it as well. So. How did you know that? Uh, the dog, it's, it's been a reoccurring problem. Mm -hmm. This is um, not the first time it's tried to... It's not the first time? No, it's not. Okay, tell me about the prior incidents. Prior incidents, um, you know, I'd be going to my backyard and the dog would come running at me, lunging at me. Uh, I'd go out to my backyard and try to take the trash and, uh, you know, I'd have to come back inside my house running with terror and fear. There's no fence in her yard? There's not, ma'am. What's going on, ma'am? Okay, this, um, my dog actually is on, is tied up all the time except this time except the only time that we let our dog loose is to do his business that day i let him out usually my husband does because he does have a little bit do you have a fenced in yard not we do now back that was at the corrected. time of this incident at the time of the incident we did how did your dog get in his yard he i let him loose that day because i was gonna allow him to do his business where were you i was there he's never unsupervised he is always tied, but we let, when we let him loose, he is supervised all the time. He does not run loose by himself. Uh, the other three little dogs are the first ones to... No, no, no. I'm going back to the date of this incident. How did your dog get in his yard? By running over to the other side. Okay, that's a problem. That is. That's a problem. And it's apparently not the first time it's happened. It's probably happened, he says, frequently. I don't believe that. You don't know? I know that. I know he doesn't. The time that he's, the incident that he's talking about when he's come out of his back uh, door to throw out the trash, he, my dog, yes, he did run towards him. He raised his arms up to hit him. I said, don't do that, Rick. Talk to him. He will listen. <laughs> If he would have listened, he wouldn't have attacked me. 
You witnessed this entire thing? Yes, I did. And so you see your dog running after him? I call out to him. And Rick, instead of calling out to him, Buddy stopped. He raised his arms out like he was hitting, going to hit him. She constantly tells me not to show fear and try to pet the dog, but when a dog's coming at me in an aggressive fashion, barking at me, showing his teeth and fangs, I'm not gonna try to pet a dog like that. <laughs> Common sense will tell you that's not the right thing to do. How many dogs were running after you that day, sir? Uh, her dog, the big dog, Buddy, which I have pictures of. So there was more than one dog? Yes, ma'am. Running loose? Yes, ma'am. And Buddy's the one that bit you? Yes, ma'am. So correct. your dogs are running around like a pack of wolves in your neighborhood? No, not a pack of wolves, no. They're, these little dogs are little. I mean, the you only seem big to be one is like completely, shepherd. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, and you know you're not making any sense. L let me see what Buddy looks like. Are those the other dogs terrorizing yes. the neighborhood? <laughs> and and you, you want him to the only... talk to the dog and call the dog by name, a dog that's charging him. That's your he will solution. Listen. He will listen. Buddy, stop. He will listen. He does listen. You want him to be the dog whisperer. Coming up, not everyone wants to play with a neighbor's dogs. You don't have a fence. These dogs we are do running have, loose in the neighborhood. Now. When this happened, you had no fence, ma'am. Not everyone wants to play with your dogs. And later, was the car accident a scam? Why do you think this was a setup? Out here in California, it's a... Uh... Swoop and squat. So you think the other two cars that stopped for you were a part of her crew? Correct. Plaintiff Rick Hernandez was attacked by his neighbor's dog. He's suing for the cost of medical expenses, lost wages, and pain and suffering. Defendant Vicki Baraja says her dog would never attack another person unless provoked, so she doesn't know. What happened, sir? So you were bit. Did you call the police? What did you do? I called animal control, and uh, they came out to my house. They took a report, and uh, after they left, uh, they told me that Whatever I needed to do as far as seeking medical attention, that'd probably be a good thing to do. Well, what did you do? Uh, I went to the hospital. They cleaned the wound out, made sure everything was good. Um, they gave me pain, pain medication as well as antibiotics. So you I have did. photos of your injuries? Uh, yes, I do, ma'am. May I see them, please? Yes, ma'am. I mean, ma'am, your neighbor... I just... offered to take him to the hospital that day. I object. You didn't even tell me you were sorry. Yes, or I let did. Alone give me a ride. Yes, I did. I did offer to take him. He walked away from me. But why? Why is why is you offering him to take him to the hospital supposed what? to be of some comfort? How about your dog don't bite him in the first place? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Ooh. I tried to do my part. Those we are set two up a fence. teeth marks. Yes, ma'am. That's what a nice dog usually does. Outrageous, outrageous. And you know what? You know what bothers me? You let these dogs run loose and you think it's okay. You no, think I it's okay. No, I don't think it's okay. I, I, oh, you absolutely do. Because it is clear to me, you don't have a fence. These dogs we are do running have, loose in the neighborhood. Now. When this happened, you had no fence, ma'am. Not everyone wants to play with your dogs. I understand that. The plaintiff said that he had to miss time from work, go to the doctor, get vaccinations, which he has provided proof of, and you say that you don't owe for any of these things. What is your reason? The reason is I asked him to take him to the doctor that day. He turned away from me and walked away. He never tried to notify me or let me know that he had a problem. Okay, I'm sorry. You knew, he w you knew that your dog bit him, right? Yes. So because he didn't take you up on a ride to the hospital, you don't know? I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear on what you're saying. I didn't say I didn't owe. This is what you wrote in your answer. I don't owe because I offered to take Rick to a clinic immediately after my dog scratched him. Rick refused to go, and then he has the nerve to ask me for the money for his medical bills, lost wages, and pain and suffering. Absolutely not. I mean, if you're going to be a dog owner, you need to learn how to be a responsible dog owner. Because right now, you look like a really That's bad hard. dog owner in my eyes. <laughs> The law is very clear in your state, you in your city, in your town, in this area, you either have to have those dogs enclosed up in a fence or they have to be on a leash. There is no other option. 
There is no excuse for what happened. You are responsible. This is the judgment. $1,853 for medical expenses, $500 for pain and suffering. That's a total judgment of $2,353. Verdict for the plaintiff. Plaintiff Brenda Perez says the defendant sideswiped her car and because he doesn't have insurance, dodged her calls. She's suing for $3,807, the cost of auto repairs. Defendant Howard Franklin says he feels like he got set up for a swoop and squat to get some fast cash, so he doesn't owe. Brenda Perez? Yeah. You are suing the defendant Howard Franklin? Yes, Judge for $3,807 auto repairs as a result of a car accident the two of you had? Yes. Okay, I'll start with you, ma'am. Tell me what happened. Okay, so I was traveling east on um, Bredondo Beach Boulevard, and I was just coming out of work. It was around um, 4.15, no later than 4.30 p.m. Where was this located? Uh, in the city of Gardena. Okay. Okay, so I was going straight, and um, there's two lanes blocked off. They have traffic. Mine doesn't. There's no red light, um, no stop sign, nothing like that. And I just see the... So you were just driving down yeah, just a, a street? Mm -hmm. Driving down the street. No... No car. You had the right of way? Yeah, I have the right of way. Okay. And he just comes out of nowhere and just... I see his the tip of his car and I start honking and I press the brake. And he didn't hear me. He failed to stop because he was going pretty fast because the impact was really, really like... Was he turning into the traffic or yeah, how Yeah, he was turning work? into the traffic. Okay, you want to step over to the flat screen and show me sure. where the accident happened? Okay, where's your car? Point to so, where you were and where you were traveling. Here I am, and I'm just going straight. These two lanes were blocked off. What do you so, mean by blocked off? There's cars, like, blocked off. It's busy. It's a busy street. Mm -hmm. So these, there's just cars all along this street, and this lane is just alone. There's no cars there. I'm just going straight, minding my own business. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, and where does his car come from? His car comes from out here. So I'm going straight. I don't have to stop. There's no stop sign, there's no stop sign here. The light's mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Sir, what do you say happened? Okay, I say it's, it's different. It was a three lanes. Right. And these two, and that obstructed my view. These cars had stopped for me to make my turn. Okay, so let me just make sure. You're traveling in this direction. That's correct. And you were going to turn in this direction. That is correct. Okay, you said the two cars. Two cars had already stopped for me. They stop for you, and she's to traveling. To make my turn. Something okay. called a squat and scoop. Swoop and squat? Is that what a it is? squat. Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay, and that's when, you, like, a, a group of people get together. Gather and, and you know, plot on other people in order to collect funds, monies from the So other you think person. the other two cars that stopped for you were a part of her crew? Correct. And that she was driving, she continued to drive straight, and it was all a part of a plan. Correct. When, where did you get that information? That's, that's just normal knowledge from the people, you know, that live here. Okay, but why do you think she was involved in something like that? She was in a much larger vehicle. She was in an SUV. She had four passengers. I had... Usually, they have a group of passengers. For witnesses, is that what you're saying? Witnesses so they can have witnesses? and other participants for, to predict the injuries. So, so everyone can collect on the insurance the and they all split it? And the fraud, okay. yes. And so why do you think this was a setup? Because I'm like a senior citizen, I have a job, I, you know, and I have an income. The so car you think was they... a reasonably new car. Mm -hmm. And how would, how would they know that? I don't know how would they know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you have insurance on your car, sir? Yes. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Okay, we had, I had some, <laughs> I had maybe uh, a lapse in the insurance because I paid my check. My, the, the, the insurance payment was taken out of my checking account, and at that time, the funds went there. So, it might have had a lapse. It might have had, or it did? It did. Coming up on Judge Faith. The defendant gets physical. And this guy just comes out of nowhere and just starts bumping up against him trying to get the license plate back. My boyfriend wasn't trying to take it from him or anything. You know, he was just trying to take a picture. You got physically aggressive, sir? 
plaintiff Brenda Perez says the defendant hit her car and is now dodging her calls and will not pay. She's suing for $3,807, the cost of auto repairs. Defendant Howard Franklin says this was a classic scam using stopped cars to get some fast cash from a car accident. What happened when he hit your car? Okay, so when he hit my car, he backed out, and then he jumped out of his car, and he came screaming at me. Hey, hey, give me your information. Give me your information. Um, get out the car. Get out the car. And I'm like, just like, I couldn't get out. Obviously, he hit my door, and it slammed it in, so it, was, it wasn't able to be opened. Were you yelling like, at her? Maybe. Probably. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, so mind this. This is my first car accident. I'm 18 years old. Mm. Um, I'm just getting out of work, and I'm just like, whoa, like, it's just crazy. It all happened so fast, and he's screaming at me, so obviously, like, he, like, I really got, like, really terrified. I was like, what the heck? Why is he screaming at me, you know? Like, so I decided to call the cops. Right before I called the police, the reason I did call the police was because uh, he was being aggressive with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend hopped out the car to get his license plate that half fell off the car. We thought he was going to leave because he just backed out and just went into the other street. I didn't think he was going to go into the parking lot. So he grabbed the, his license plate and he's trying to take a picture of it. And this guy just comes out of nowhere and just starts bumping up against him trying to get the license plate back. My boyfriend wasn't trying to take it from him or anything. You know, he was just trying to take a picture. We thought he you was going to leave. You got physically aggressive, sir? That was my property. He had my license plate. I didn't know what he was going to do with it. He was a bigger guy. I didn't know if he was going to strike me with it or anything. So Did I wanted my Did you see him try to take stuff. a photo of it? No. I, I, I was going to take a photo of it, maybe. But I don't know what he was going to do. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, I, I'm not understanding your question. OK, I was just trying to figure out why you got physical with the young man because who Because he there. wouldn't release my license plate to me. Okay. He was holding back, and I was trying to get it. Okay. So we was in a struggle for the license plate, but it belonged to me, so I thought it was my property, so I wanted it. Okay. And so the reason why you don't think you're responsible for this accident is... By the way, the other two cars that you think was a part of the swoop and squat, where, where were they? They are gone now. They're gone. Okay. And so the reason why you don't think you're responsible for this accident is because you think this was a setup. Correct. And you don't have any evidence to support that, right? No. Just my rape on speculation. Random speculation, yeah. Okay. That's not a sufficient defense, sir. I can understand that. Because she has the right of way. She's traveling on a on a street with she has the right of way. Correct. She's driving down the street. You have the duty to yield. You're making a left-hand turn. You have the duty to yield. What were the damages to your car, ma'am? Uh, the two doors... Uh, well, the driver's door was unable to open, as I said, because I couldn't get out. I had to hop out the other side. Uh, the back door was uh, only able to crack a bit and wasn't able to open all the way. And uh, I think he might have hit mm -hmm. my tire, but they didn't go fully into that. Did you contact the defendant and ask him to pay for the damages? Yes, I did. What happened? He never answered. He never responded? No, he How didn't. did you get his information to file a lawsuit? Um, well, the, well, the police report, that's what I had, and then it had his address and stuff on there. So Why I didn't you respond that. when she contacted you? I didn't get any response. I didn't get any calls. And now, Judge Faith rules. Well, here's what we're going to do. You submitted an estimate showing damages to your vehicle in the amount of $3,807. Yes, ma'am. Which is higher than the blue book value of the car. Sir, you have not presented any evidence that this young lady, 18-year-old teenager, leaving work, was a part of some type of conspiracy <laughs> to get you to hit her car and cause her damage so, so she could collect. If she were a part of a conspiracy, clearly they picked the wrong person because you're driving around with no insurance. Correct. Right? But they didn't okay. know that. So, in any event, I'm going to order you to pay the plaintiff's blue book value for her vehicle, which is lower than your estimate, but that amount is in good condition. The blue book value is $2,520, judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Thank you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.